According to the World Health Organization, more than 1 billion people lack access to basic health care, and 99% of maternal deaths occur in developing countries. How can health care be improved worldwide? For the next few minutes, we'll discuss. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum, and I'm joined by Brigadier General Ron Sconyers, President and CEO of Physicians for Peace. Ron, welcome to the program. Thanks, Robert. Great to be here. So that's a horrific number. There's a lot of people out there that do not have access to basic health care. Let's talk for a few moments about what basic health care is. Is that shots for you know basic diseases, whether it's measles or, 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 or polio or something like that? And is it more complex than, let's say, if I have a common cold and I want to go to the doctor to get some medicine for that? Some of these developing countries barely have that access. Is that correct? It's a combination of all those things, and it's just that, that basic access. A large percentage of the developing world has no access to health care whatsoever. And what that does is then has repercussions into their work life, into their family life. Um, they become nonproductive in their communities because they don't have access, and so they suffer from totally preventable diseases. Diarrhea amongst children is the number one debilitating disease in the world, and it's clearly something that could be treated with, with that kind of access. So, You know, Ron, a few moments ago, I read this interesting and very alarming statistic in Malawi. For every 88,000 people, there's only one physician. How can that be? Is that First of all, is that true? And I hope it's not. And if it is, how can that be? Sadly, it's true in Malawi and many countries in Africa. It's interesting that 24% of the disease burden in the world is in Africa, yet they only have 3% of the health care resources in, in that continent. 3%. 3%. Wow. And what's happening is they train some very good people, but the conditions are so poor, the, rec the compensation is so poor that they actually pick up and leave and get some go somewhere else and get recruited by the developing world. So it's a, it's a, it's a, a flight of the really the, the sure. best and the brightest. You know, we're so fortunate in this country, and for the folks that are watching this program at home, you know, when you send your child to get shots for malaria or measles or or the mumps or so forth. That's something that you do here or we do here. Uh, again, that's pretty common, uh, regardless of your income. Uh, but over in Africa, that is a big struggle. In fact, you know, I, I was reading somewhere that 40 percent of, of young people get burned and they, they're untreated for it. They are, and that's one of the things that Physicians for Peace is all about. When we started 25 years ago, we realized that there was a lot of great organizations that were going in and providing clinical treatment. But what there wasn't a lot of are people coming in and providing ed education and training. So we sort of created this uh, teach one, heal many mantra. So we take people into those areas and work with burn units, and we take surgeons, we take therapists, we take nutritionists, and we teach them how to care for those burn patients so that they can be productive. Because in most of these developing countries, whether you're a burn patient or you're an amputee, you are an outcast. And we feel like everyone has a God-given right to access to good health care. So we are all about mobilizing volunteers from throughout the world to go into these developing countries and really work with their counterparts to give them the skills so they can treat those patients, so they can live those productive lives. We've got about 45 seconds left, Ron. How do you treat uh, a billion people when everything is a priority? In other words, how do you prioritize when literally you have so many developing countries out there that just simply are, are clamoring and begging for help? With limited resources, how do you sit down with a map, I assume, and say, okay, we're going to go into this country, we're going to teach one person, hopefully that's going to treat many. How do you do that? Well, you just have to sort of triage it. You have to look at where the biggest problems are. We work in interesting areas because we work in these fringe areas with amputee rehabilitation, child and maternal health, burns. Um, but what we really are all about is w healing one person one at a time. And we take these people that we train, we we train them to be better trainers and to train others, and it's just sort of that exponential effect. All right. Well, Ron, thank you very much for joining us, and keep up the great work. Thank you, sir. And thank you for joining us for this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.